Okay, so the next session, <coughs> I think how we're doing for time, quarter past three, so um, I, well, I'm not going to race through it, but I'll, I'll make it as quick as, as possible, and uh, then we'll go on to roadmap after that. So we'll, we'll do the whole lot in one go, and then people can uh, either come to the pub with us or we'll go and do whatever they want to do. It's London, it's Friday night, so world is your oyster, as they say. Okay, so... I'm going to talk through the drivers behind doing some of what we're calling advanced deployment options. Now, these are, these are ways of deploying the Helix Media Library that we have built into version 3 of the software. This isn't something that we kind of document or have um, a kind of productized thing that we can just say, there you go, this is it, and... Um, you know, you order this particular product code and we'll, we'll sell it to you. This is more something that we're looking to productize, but if there's a need for it today for you to do it, we can definitely do it. This is something that, that we've done with lots of people already where there's a very, very high demand placed on their media library service. So this is actually something, potentially, John, you could, you could look at with us as well. Um, so I'll go through the drivers behind wanting to do something like this. And then I'll go through some sort of examples of why you might want to do it. And then the things that, that are available, the sort of um, infrastructures that we've set up for people and the sort of things that we could potentially set up for you if, if you want us to, of course, because it, you know, it's, uh, it's obviously additional cost associated with this. But this is kind of the way things are going from what I'm seeing. Existing customers that we've got or customers that are coming to us with quite stretching requirements are kind of saying, well, actually, I need a bit more kind of horsepower to my solution and what can you offer. So this is really why we developed this, this way of doing it. So the drivers, one of the drivers for having a kind of scaled up media library is just to, you know, it's very obvious, just to increase the, to increase the speed of the conversion of the files. So if you have lots of people uploading stuff, you're going to have a queue developing. It's a number crunching exercise to encode a file. We we can make things quicker by doing certain things, but we're never going to make it so that you can encode a file in one second. It's just it's never going to happen. Increased demand will obviously dictate the fact that you're going to have more files that are uploaded. So it's fairly obvious stuff. But also, what I've found is that when people start using the media library within their VLE, you'll have, exactly as John was saying earlier, you'll have this incremental um, you know, uh, bump in usage because it's more available. It's more kind of in people's face than what it is as a separate solution that they have to log into. And then also, you know, just the increased importance of the service internally. I mean, I've got customers myself that are very long-standing customers that, you know, if that service goes down, I mean, boy, do we know about it. You know, they're on the phone within minutes. They're getting complaints from people and we're putting it up for them just straight away. And I know that you know, one of my particular customers, he will send an email to 250 individual users if there's any problem with the service at all, because he knows he's going to get it in the neck <laughs> if something isn't working properly. Um, another one of my customers is a university, and they have over 500 different contributors to their media library. So that, you know, they've gone from zero to 500. So it shows the, you know, the increase in the, um, the, the importance of this as a service. So examples of things that I've seen that might necessitate the need to scale up your media library. The TV recordings is an interesting one. I, I mentioned it earlier. If you've got these kind of two streams of content coming in, one which is content from your VLE and one which is TV recording content, we aren't discriminating between, oh, do this one first and then do this one next. We're just saying, whatever comes in first, we'll do it. So the example that, that I would give is, there's an assessment time, and people are submitting a load of stuff. All students will submit stuff a minute before the deadline. We know that. It's a given. Then a TV recording comes in. I don't know. It's a two-hour long, you know, one of these Channel 4 things. <laughs> Top 40 comedians or whatever. You know, that comes in. It's going to take a while to transcode it, and then the other, the other stuff will wait behind it in the queue. So that's just one example. And then... Like I say here, submission deadline dates, a lot of the time you'll find that these things will come in all in one go. So there's, there's got to be a kind of 
way of scaling it, is exactly as what John was talking about. You've got to, there's got to be at least an option to do that. And I mean, you might find that this is something you don't really need to consider in the short term, but it's just to tell you that as it scales, we have a solution for it. We've got lots of different options. The other one that I've seen as well is now, um, because there's all these foreign campuses all over the place, the uptime has got to be there. I mean, you can't, it's no longer acceptable for your Moodle or your Blackboard to be down at three in the morning. I mean, up, because there might be somebody in Malaysia trying to access it, and that's their daytime at the end of the day. So we've definitely seen this shift with VLEs where you go along and you kind of, you talk to somebody about their Blackboard and Moodle five years ago, and they'd kind of say, well, yeah, you know, it's important, but. Now it's kind of just like, well, it's got to be up all the time, and that's it. There's no arguing about it. And some of it is because of these different campuses that people have and the need to have it up there all the time. Other bits around it are just around IT policy, the fact that it's not acceptable to have things that are down for prolonged periods of time. So different options. The first one is, is quite a simple uh, one, and this is something that John was talking about earlier. You just have a kind of a non-production instance of media library. This is just a kind of Visio drawing of, of roughly how it works. So in this instance, you've got your one media library. Most people would have that rigged up to a, a cluster, SQL cluster database. Some people might have the, the database just on the server itself, not something I'd recommend. Then the content would normally be on a SAN, some kind of um, storage that, that isn't on the, the server itself. It's connected up to AD and Blackboard in, in the way that it would be. And then they just sort of have this kind of HTML that's sat there that's connected up to the same database, potentially the same content. It doesn't have to be necessarily, but it's just a sandbox environment. I mean, you kind of, if you run a VLE, most people will run a sandbox VLE. So it's, it's just having that sort of environment so that if, if we do an update to our software, you can test it fully before you actually upgrade it on your live platform. This is actually an environment that, you know, you'll probably say, oh, I, I, I knew you'd probably say that because you know, your company's going to make more money out of it. But this is actually something I would recommend because there are so many different ways of running our software and so many different scenarios and so many different things that can be connected up to. We work as hard as we possibly can to test our software for all of those scenarios, but there are hundreds of thousands of different ways of doing it, and we, we can't possibly test all of them. So we do... We do try to recommend our customers to have a non-production instance in order to do this stuff so they can be you know, happy with it. Most of our customers that have been with us for quite a long time do actually have this set up already. And this is just a case, you know, it's, it's a licensing thing. You know, talk to Chris about licensing it if you want, if you want to do that. So benefits, I mean, it's, ob it's obvious stuff. It could be a backup as well. So some, some people, what they do is they kind of have the media library installed on this non-production box, and it's rigged up to the, the same database and the same content store. And then if box A goes down, they just switch the DNS of, that, of box B to, to what box A was pointed at, and then they get minimal downtime, but it's a DNS change. It's not the most elegant way of doing it. This isn't true redundancy, it's not true failover. This is just a potential way that you could minimize downtime by having a, you know, another instance of HTML that's pointing at the same place and you can reroute re the, the DNS, reroute where it's pointed at. And ideally in this instance, most people would have a, a spec that mirrors their existing Helix Media Library to, to make it a kind of fair test of the, the software if they're, if they're doing a test of it before they're rolling it out. So that's one way of doing it. The other way is to scale it. This, certainly for newer customers that, that we've got coming along that are using this with Moodle, this definitely seems to be the way that it's going. So in this instance, you're, you're doing exactly the same as what most people would be doing today, a media library connected to a SQL cluster and to a content store, rigged up to AD, rigged up to Moodle and Blackboard. So nothing out of the ordinary there. The only thing that's out of the ordinary here is you want to increase the encoding speed. So what you're adding is what we call encoding instances. And that's just basically more physical or more likely virtual hardware that is um, contributing to the, to the queue 
of stuff that's coming into media library. So in this instance, you would have your media library running on one bit of hardware, and then you would run what we call an encoding instance, which is a very, you know, it's like a very small version of HTML that really just has the encoder running. There's not that much configuration that you need to do with it. I mean, this is something that, that Dave does all the time. And then you could install it on one, two, three, a hundred servers. I mean, however many you want. And then when the encoder runs, if it's got one in the queue, encoder number one will hit it. If there's another thing in the queue, encoder number two will hit it. And they'll all run concurrently encoding stuff until there's no queue left. So this could concurrently encode. I mean, where's Dave? Is he still there? How many? Have we? Three, four? I think we've tested with up to four, haven't we? I don't think we've ever gone any higher than four. But the theory of it is that it could be four or 400. It's just extra hardware that's being thrown at the problem, really. So this, this is a, an interesting solution in that as demand scales, there's something to meet it. You don't forever have to be kind of like, oh, actually, this is going really well now. What, what do we do about this? <laughs> you know, we've got this single encoder that's just hitting all these clips. It's taking too long. I have quite a few customers with this problem because as demand scales, it is a number crunching exercise. Encoding takes time. I, I, you know, there's nothing that I can do to, to make that instant. So that's the other scenario that you can do, the scalable, and it's just adding encoders to the mix. Um, it's really well suited to virtual environments because people can fire up virtual servers quite easily. And the spec that you have to have for that virtual server is high in terms of processor. But you know the storage and stuff that you need on that box is almost nothing because it's just taking a file, transcoding it, throwing it back to the media library. So it's a high spec encoding box. I think I've put it here. This is the kind of spec that you'd need for that, you know, quad core, four gigs, 16 gigs of RAM. You don't need one drive on it, and just the Windows operating system. I mean, you could do it on a lesser spec, but it's just going to take longer to transcode. If you're going to the expense of having an extra encoder, you may as well make the spec of that machine good. And you can do as many of those as you want, or as many as you can afford, <laughs> probably more accurately. Fully resilient solution. This is kind of the, the stage further than the, 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 the scalable encoding. This is something that we've done. We've done two or three of these just lately, actually, big projects that we've taken on. And they've both been with Moodle, actually. This one is a, 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 a load balanced solution. So this one is, I mean, it's a bit of a spider's web of a Visio diagram here, but. This is to say that you would deploy two media libraries, and they are both essentially live media libraries. You put them behind a load balancer. User A comes in. He might potentially be served the web pages from box A, or he might get it from box B, dependent on the, the rule in place with the load balancer. But the important thing to say is here is if box A goes down, you know, there's a disk failure or you know, whatever reason box A goes down, box B will still be there. So when the user goes to browse the media library, goes to play the content back, it's still going to work because you've got these two boxes there. So it is, it is a resilient solution in that there's, there's a load balance pair there. To this solution as well, you can add as many encoders as you want. So this is kind of a fully scaled up solution. This is somebody that's kind of, look, I'm really worried about um, having full redundancy on this system, and I want it to run as quickly as it possibly can. So this is the sort of solution for somebody that, that wants to kind of go to stage three straight away and is, is, is worried about running it in, in such a way. So like I say, we've done a few of these lately, but they've generally been people that have used them with VLEs, things like Moodle, where they, where they want it up all the time. And they, they want to match the kind of the, the service level that they have on Moodle with the service level that they have on the media library. It's truly resilient in that there's two of them, um, and it's load balanced as well. So there's some performance gains there as well. Because if, if somebody went to box, you know, you, you could create whatever rule you like on the load balancer, but that's more of a techie thing. Spec of it, again, you'd want it to match your existing media library. Um, and that those are the specs of the media library. Any questions on that? Or have I bored you to tears on it? <laughs> So it's a bit, tech, bit techy, but it's just to say it's available because we do get a lot of people that say, oh, it, 
I've got a lot of people uploading content and I'm a bit worried about how long it's going to take. So it's just saying that those options are available, really. Yep. If we had a digital encoder, do we need additional licenses? Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's no get out there for us. So, you know, we, we've got, got, got people's wages to pay, unfortunately. <laughs> um, the cost of that, I mean, again, because this isn't something that we have as a line item on a, on a price list at the moment, the cost of that is relatively flexible. I mean, if you have X amount budget, we can, we can work around it. So it's kind of come to us with, if, you, if there's a business need to do it, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to be accommodating with it. We don't have a, a set price list on it because it's more of a, at the moment, there's a licensing cost of doing it, but it's more of a kind of professional services type engagement where we're saying, we can do this for you, we'll help you with it, it's going to take this many days. We can show you how to do it as well, but it's better done in that way, really. And I know, actually, I was speaking to Clive about this. So, yeah, I know, I know where you're coming from, don't worry. <laughs> Anything else on this subject? I don't think I'll do the subject next year. Doesn't it? Doesn't it like struck a chord with people? Everyone's here. Everyone here's from more a teaching and learning point of view. I think. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's just to say it's there. Really, it's not a sales pitch. It's just because we do get a lot of people that that are worried about that particular scenario. And like John was saying earlier, you've got to know that it will scale if you need it. And you will find it will grow. As soon as you hook it into your VLA, you'll, you'll get that growth for sure. Okay.